The first piece of equipment to introduce you to is the rock saw, which of course is used to trim our rock samples down into suitable sized chips that can be polished and mounted onto a glass slide. During the cutting process, we may also identify unique features on our sample that we want to highlight or focus on in our thin section. So again, we'll use the rock saw to trim a chip that focuses in on that area of interest. Here in our lab, we use a 10 inch Covington trim saw, which is similar to other trim saws available on the market, but you should always check your documentation for your equipment to identify any unique features or special functions it may have. With that said, I'd like to turn things over to one of our student volunteers, Sarah Yoon, who will show us this and some of the other equipment we have here in the lab. While in operation, the splash guard keeps most of the water from spraying onto the operator and into the surrounding workspace. This should always be in place when the saw is running. The water for the saw, which acts as both a lubricant and coolant during cutting, is stored within an internal tank that can be periodically refilled as needed, here at the reservoir port. The saw blade itself does not have a sharp edge, but a diamond impregnated edge with grooves. This helps increase the cutting rate and the contact of water with the rock sample. An adjustable guard over the top of the saw blade suppresses the amount of spray and keeps the water concentrated on the blade and the sample. When not in use, we keep the trim saw unplugged. The power cord, located here at the back of the saw, will be plugged in when we're ready to cut our rock samples. When we are plugged in and ready, we will flip the power switch, located here, to turn the saw on or off. We'll fire up the rock saw later when we're ready to trim our first rock sample. Another set of equipment that we will be using is the force pole which is a grinding wheel used for polishing sample chips in preparation to be epoxied to a glass slide. The Forcimat is an automatic specimen mover used to hold multiple sample chips for polishing. However, we won't be using the Forcimat, but if you have this type of equipment, you may want to try using it. Now that the Forcipole has been turned on, notice that the display panel is where we can start or stop the wheel and control variables such as the speed, duration, and direction of spin. As with the trim saw, our coolant and lubricant is water, started by flipping the water switch into the on position. And in the event that something should go wrong and you need to immediately stop the equipment, an emergency shutdown button is readily available to bring the operation to a halt. Otherwise, the wheel and the machine may be shut down normally using the control panel, and if we're finished, we will turn off our water source and power off the equipment. Sarah's going to go ahead and get our samples ready to cut on the rock saw, so I'm going to show you our final piece of equipment that we'll be using in the thin section making process. The geoform has two primary functions. On the left is the cutting module, which is used to cut off the excess sample chip from the glass slide. The slide is fixed on a holder via a vacuum pump and is pushed through the cutoff saw, leaving a layer of rock on your slide approximately 2 millimeters thick. When the saw is in operation, water is delivered and recycled as a coolant via a pair of pumps from the recirculating water tank stored beneath the geoform. On the right is the precision grinding module, where our sample slide will be fixed on a holder via the vacuum pump and carefully ground down to a thickness at or near the appropriate thickness for your thin section. Water is pumped and recycled from the water tank and delivered via an adjustable water nozzle to the grinding cup to keep things cool and lubricated. As material is ground away from your slide, the sample holder is moved horizontally and precisely by turning the side arm using the built-in digital micrometer for guidance. To operate the geoform, the power switch, located along the right-hand side behind the grinding module, is flipped into the on position and the vacuum pump is also turned on. From the geoform control panel, we can turn on the vacuum for either the cutting or grinding module and monitor and control the amount of pressure holding our sample slides in place. Turn on the water, and when we're ready to begin cutting or grinding, both splash guards must be lowered before the cutting and grinding motor can be activated. A magnetic safety switch on both guards must be aligned for the motor to work. Once both switches are aligned, the start button activates the motor for cutting or grinding. When finished, the stop button deactivates the motor. And, as with the force pole, should something go wrong and you need to immediately stop the operation, an emergency shutdown button is readily available to bring the operation to a halt. We'll review many of these features again as we work our way step by step through the thin section making process. 
But if you're ready, let's go ahead and get started. 